then he looked at me and he was like, hmm, and you're Nigerian? I said, yes, I'm Nigerian. He's like, wow. And then he was like, and then he made a comment saying that uh, he thinks like Nigerians should not be given uh, computers. He thinks that Nigerians shouldn't be given um, technology to work with. And <laughs> hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, you're welcome. My name is Janet and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Thank you for stopping by. And for those of you that are always coming back to watch my videos, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting me. So today I want to talk about migration and relocating. And just as you can tell from the title, this video was inspired by a conversation I had with a friend of mine yesterday who is thinking of relocating and moving from Nigeria to another country here in Europe. And we did have a, a re really long conversation about it. And I told her the good part of it, the opportunity she can get, have. And also there are other things that I feel like we don't really address. We don't talk about when it comes to relocation. So I thought, why not just come on YouTube and also share some of the things I, I have experienced and also some of the things I know other people are experiencing, but they are not just, I don't know, openly discussing some of these challenges. So let's jump right into the video. Okay guys, so what I'm about to say in this video is not meant to discourage anyone, okay? It's just for informational purposes and it's meant to just prepare your mind when you are uh, trying to relocate to a foreign country. And the things I'm going to say here is not applicable to everyone. So the first thing I would like to mention is that the grass is not always greener on the other side. So it's easier for you to be in one country and then you look at your counterpart in another country and feel like, oh, if I leave maybe Nigeria and go to the UK, then my problems are going to be solved or my challenges are just going to disappear. But this is a Nigerian mentality, I would say. I don't know about other countries, but I would say this is a huge Nigerian mentality that the moment you just learn in Obodoibo, like you have made it, but to be honest, that is not the case. Because you have to also think about it in this way. You are going to a country where ha they have their own challenges also. In the new country you are moving to, there are people who are jobless. There are also people who uh, ha are unemployed. And typically when we move uh, from one place to another, we're either looking to go study or to look for job opportunities to ma make our lives better, right, than how it is uh, at the moment. So you also have to have it at the back of your mind that people are not in the UK picking money on the streets. People are not in the UK picking jobs on the streets. It's the same level of grind. It's the same level of hustle. And it's not, it's not guaranteed that uh, when you go as a student you're, and you finish your studies that you're going to be able to get a job that keeps you there legally. So that is one thing I want to mention. Like It's a mentality that we do have that, like uh, moving abroad solves all life problem but that is not true it's actually not easy to find jobs like except if you you already have a job opportunity like you already hired and then you move maybe from nigeria to the uk on a job contract but it's not easy to get uh, employed especially like um, looking for companies that will sponsor you to have legal stay and typically when there's a job opening in these countries first they will consider their citizens first because their citizens also need jobs. And then they will consider other European citizens. So uh, those from Germany, Spain, Italy, Hungary, wherever, wherever in Europe. And then they will not consider you as a foreigner, as a third national who is not a citizen of the country and is also not a European citizen. So you can imagine the different levels that they have to go before they get to you. So I want you to go with the mindset that things are not going to be easy, but I will put in my best. I will do everything I can to be able to achieve my goals, to be able to achieve the things that I want to achieve, to be able to make my life better and the lives of my family members also better. So the grass is not always greener on the other side. The second point I want to talk about is about finances. Okay, it's about money, which is important. <laughs> and I feel like things here are pretty expensive. And uh, I also feel like people here tend to um, leave to pay rent, pay bills, like it's a continuous circle of getting paid and then 80% of the money goes to expenses and there is very little room for you to save money, for you to invest money. Uh, money. 
I feel like it's just the way the system is set up. So basically, when you get paid, even before you get paid, the government takes the taxes, which, okay, it's fine. But depending on where you are living, the taxes can be really high. And by the time you get paid, you have so many bills to pay. You have your rent, which is typically the takes the bulk of your salary. You have the electricity bill, you have water bill, you have internet bill. You have community fee, like in this building, we pay the community fee and the community fee consists of the tr trash, the cleaning, the elevator, uh, maintenance and all these things. We also have the internet bill to pay. So all these bills do add up at the end of the month to take a huge chunk of your salary. Usually when I talk to my friend and I tell them like how much I'm paying here has rent, like they, they are really surprised and they're like why are you paying so much money like that and then i try to say don't think about it in naira because if you think about it in naira it's like <laughs> the amount of money i pay here in three months i can get a very comfortable place in nigeria and pay for a year so three months rent here can give me a very comfortable place in nigeria for one year because the standard of living is pretty high compared to nigeria so things can get expensive also food is also an expense that takes a huge chunk of people's salary and it's not easy to be honest it's not easy to navigate the system even if you want to set up a business it's not easy especially if you're in a country where the language is not english like you have to learn the language and in some places it's not so easy to learn the language for you to be able to to get information that you need to set up a business except maybe if you get an agent or if you get a lawyer but then these things come with their own risk also if you don't understand what is being discussed in a negotiation then you just be left like anything they can just do anything with you and you're just there what point i'm going to raise is more on an emotional level and it's about loneliness it's also about um homesickness and when you're relocating you're leaving everything that you know your family your friends uh you're leaving your everything that you know since you're little you're leaving that and you're moving to a new place where you know absolutely no one so it can be really daunting and it can be really challenging to make friends and find people that you can surround yourself with so i know there are people that easily make friends like you are in a new place you easily can make friends but there are also people that it's not so easy for them to make friends and you have to put in that extra effort to be able to make new friends and meet new people for me, I've always had issues with homesickness. I was always homesick. I always wanted to go home. Like if I had the opportunity, I would have traveled every month, every month to go back to Nigeria. But I feel like now I'm getting better with it. I've gotten better with homesickness after like, what, over 10 years of being outside. So you can imagine like every time you want to, you feel like you want to go home, just go to your family house, sleep in your room, sleep in your bed and eat everything that you have missed. <laughs> But then when you think about the flight ticket, eh, it's, it's not cheap, like flight ticket from here to Nigeria is not cheap. You are spending $700 to $1,000 on every trip, sometimes even more depending on the airline and also depending on when you are buying the ticket. It can be really expensive and when you think about that expense, that homesickness will just disappear. So for me, homesickness was always an issue, but I think I'm... I'm getting better with it. I can stay more than a year without traveling and I'll be fine. So while you're about to travel, also have it at the back of your mind that loneliness and homesickness comes with the package and you have to find a way to navigate that and you have to find a way to make uh, your life a little bit better when you go to your new country. The fourth point is about racism. Okay, so you are always going to be a foreigner wherever you go like no matter how long you've stayed in the country you still be a foreigner and there are still people that are going to be mean to you they are going to say nasty things to you they are going to call you names i'm going to speak specifically about africans and blacks for africans for nigerians i would say like you should be ready to have uh, episodes of people calling you names people insulting you i've had of cases where where africans were beaten in the public transport just because they are blacks and they are told to go back to their countries and you know being harmed and being injured uh, just because you are black so in some cases you will enter a public transport and no one wants to sit next to you uh, in the bus or in the tram and even when you sit like um, the person next to you can just get up and move to another part of the bus just so that they are not close to you I don't know what is it 
uh, that they feel like I don't know if they feel threatened or if they feel like you're going to attack them or something but you should be ready to experience this kind of things the issue of racism is a big thing especially on Africans especially on blacks like it's it's it can get really bad most recent um, act of I wouldn't say racism but it's more of profiling I don't know if it's racial profiling or country profiling but uh, the last time I was traveling and I was uh, in the bus, I think it was bus 100E, I was going to the airport and there was a German man sitting next to me and we were just talking and then when he, f he started asking me some questions and when I told him I was working, he was, he was now like, hmm, so where do you work? And I told him where I was working and he like, so what do you do? Like, he was asking what I do in the company where I work. So I told him I was in IT and I, this is what I do. And then he looked at me and he was like, hmm, and you're Nigerian? I said, yes, I'm Nigerian. He's like, wow. And then he was like, and then he made a comment saying that uh, he thinks like Nigerians should not be given uh, computers. He thinks that Nigerians shouldn't be given um, technology to work with. And <laughs> I honestly didn't know what to say to this man because you know that there is this notion about Nigerians and cyber, sec and cyber crime in 419 and all these things but it doesn't necessarily mean it's all nigerians that are out there doing bad things like okay if they give me technology to work with or computers to work with what am i going to do like am i going to hack the system and steal money or something like dude why do you have to say this to me uh saying that nigerians shouldn't be given access to technology shouldn't be given access to computers I was just there looking at this man and I felt really bad like I felt really bad but I didn't know what to say like you know when you are just someone says something to you and just like and after a while like he just he, he I think he kind of knew that I was not interested anymore in talking to him so I just minded my business and I continued doing when I was you know my phone and and then he was quiet so that's the most recent um profiling i don't know racial profiling or country profiling i don't know that i did experience but the issue of racism is big it's big man and it's something that you should be aware thing of. i would like to talk about is keeping up with immigration law keeping up with renewing your residence permits renewing your visas like this is as stressful and it takes the process in some cases it's not it's not straightforward it's not clear and the fact that you got a visa from nigeria a one-year visa or a two-year residence permit to come over to a foreign country doesn't mean that that's the end of it no that's not the end of your struggle with immigration officers and usually these immigration officers i don't know if it's a criteria for them to be hired but they're usually mean people like these people are not smiling they are mean and Sometimes you would have your documents complete to go and renew your papers and they would have several excuses why they don't want to renew your papers for you. And if you are coming in as a student and you finish your studies, you in some countries you have the opportunity to look for a job. So they will give you the grace period of six months to six months, nine months, sometimes one year has grace period for you to be able to look for a job. If you're not able to find a job within this period, you will have to leave the country and in some countries self, they don't even give you the opportunity to look for jobs i know like uk like immediately you finish studying like they want to package you and put you back in nigeria where you came from and you won't have the opportunity to work or have um experience in the corporate world uh, if you are thinking about like working after studies in some of the countries that are in europe and the issue of renewing your papers it's not easy and some people are lucky, you know, you find a job with a company that are, they are willing to sponsor you, they are willing to sponsor your stay. And the moment your permit expires, like you have someone that is going to take you to the immigration office and do all the necessary documentation for you to uh, get your papers renewed. Not everyone is lucky to have this kind of opportunities and you should always have a purpose of stay, like whenever you're trying to renew your papers. So guys, this was all I wanted to talk about today in this video. Don't forget to like this video subscribe and also hit the notification bell so you can get notified whenever i upload a new video thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in my next one